Graham is the uh, Chief Creative Officer at uh, Magic Leap. Chief. Thank you. So, Grandma, uh, for people who may not know, uh, tell us a little bit about your career in, in games here. Oh, golly. Um, I mean, you all know me, right? <laughs> um, I've been making games since the 1970s. The first game I made was on a TRS-80, which, uh, if you remember the resolution of a TRS-80, you know that uh, it was black and white and it didn't have a lot of pixels, but the memory address still started at, what, 16, yeah, I, I still remember how to program it. But uh, very quickly moved on to work at Atari for a little while, worked at Lucasfilm um, in the 80s, and then moved to the States. Started a company called Trilobite, um, made a game called The Seventh Guest, The Eleventh Hour. I like that one. <laughs> that kind of kicks off the whole <laughs> CD-ROM industry. We can debate whether it's Mist or Seventh Guest as to which one's best. It's obvious, but just saying. Um, <laughs> Moved on to, um, um, from there on to id Software, was the uh, lead designer on Quake 3, um, which kind of kicked off internet gameplay a little bit and uh, um, did well there. Went from there on to Microsoft, worked on Age of Empires 3, and was lead designer, lead writer on Halo Wars, uh, the best of the Halo series. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love, that. I love them all. Gosh, I'm gonna get killed for that one. <laughs> <laughs> And from there, I, I moved on to Apple and helped, um, um, helped games at Apple. So I was um, you know, the guy that was like, if you're putting a virtual D-pad into your game, you're saying your game is better on a Nintendo DS. Do you want to say your game is better on a Nintendo DS? And you know, encouraging people to look at this marvelous touch device that had this incredible touch screen and what games is like for that. And, um, and, and that was, you know, we helped launch the iPad, helped launch a whole bunch of very cool games to help, help think about touch as, as the actual natural interface. And after that, I kind of retired and kind of living in Santa Cruz right down the road from here, walking my dogs on the beach in the morning, having my own little company with uh, doing the occasional talks and so forth. And uh, then along came Magic Leap. Yeah, so you like to be on the cutting edge then. Uh, what, what was attractive about Magic Leap? Uh, the fact I thought it was impossible. <laughs> and um, Ronnie Applewoods, the CEO, he, he called up and um, he said, I think I need a games guy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, um, like, where are you? Florida, not interested. <laughs> um, walking my dogs on the beach in California every day. <laughs> and then he calls up again and he has me sign the NDA, which, um, and he sends me um, a video of the technology. And I'm like, that is impossible. You cannot do that. You can't insert things into characters and environments with occlusion and things. I'll come to Florida. So this is, let's describe this a little bit for our audience who may not know then. Uh, it's, it's augmented reality, it's... Uh, mixed reality. It's mixed reality. In, we think of mixed reality as the placement of objects in the real world that actually in, interact with objects in the real world. So if there's a table here, it knows to go be, it can go behind a table. We think of augmented reality as things that just go on top of the world. Mm -hmm. um, so there was this mixed reality demo of the robots, actually, I, um, that were um, running around the room that we've all seen. And um, I went out of Florida and took a look. And I stuck my head into this machine that was about the size of a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. um, we called it the Beast. And right away, I'm thinking of um, that movie Brainstorm, which since I've had to buy everyone in the company like that on Blu-ray, because apparently no one's seen the movie Brainstorm. Um, <laughs> And there was a monster running around on the desk in front of me, and it was a blue monster, and I could control it with an Xbox con controller. And it was looking just like it was real and on the desk. And I'm like, this is, that is weird. And then in the back of the room, a much larger monster stood up and waved at me. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't realized it was there to begin with. I didn't notice that monster to, to start off with. It was so naturally put into the environment and my accommodation when I went and looked and focused on that, my focus on the monster on the table changed and it went fuzzy. And I'm like, golly. I, I thought more than golly, but um, <laughs> um, mostly golly. Um, this is insane. I've never seen anything like that. And I went from um, you know, not moving to Florida to being in Florida and um, you know, learning about making content for this and what it, what it meant to make content in mixed reality. So Magic Leap went on to raise more than uh, 
half a billion dollars from, from Google and others, I guess. Um, uh, it seemed like that must have completely changed uh, sort of the state of attention on the company, I guess. The, I think the, the base, it's, uh, um, it, it's still a startup. I mean, Magic Leap is a company, when I look out the window, because my office is a, a window onto the office, there are rocket scientists, and there's the guy who wrote, um, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, the comic book writer, and then there's optical people that know all about optics, and there's people that know all about batteries, and there's people that, that's, there's Neil Stevenson, and he's hanging out, you know, talking. Neil Stevenson, wow. He's our chief futurist. Mm -hmm. he, um, and he's talking to the optical people that do plasma weapons at something or other in their previous lifetime. I think, I am just a guy making games for this. <laughs> um, these people are out here and they're buzzing. I mean, there is a visible buzz coming off of them of like, I just want to bask in that. And so that startup still exists. Uh -huh. And that's still the exciting thing to go, but that's a magic leap, I think, is it's still that startup. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you were in a similar situation at Apple. Um, where everyone wanted to know exactly what you guys were doing, and <laughs> you had to be fairly secretive. Um, you know, what, what's it sort of like to have to communicate out of that uh, sort of bubble? I, guess. Yeah. I think, well, at first it's very hard to communicate out of that bubble, and, but at Apple you learn how to work around that, and the Magic Leap, um, you know, I can't understand the hardware, so I can't tell you about it. Um, so, but I can tell you about what it is like to make games in mixed reality. I can tell you about the language that we're using there. I can tell you about what it is to actually go make something in the, in the world exist. I can tell you about the evolution of that software that, that our thinking's had, because golly, two years ago, we thought we were the bee's knees putting something on a table. And then two years later, it's like, oh, that's easy. Let me tell you about the games you do, and, and tell you about that evolution is actually really interesting. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are sort of some pros and cons of mixed reality when it comes to game design? <laughs> mixed reality game design is really hard. If you think it's a long way to the drugstore down the road. One of the biggest challenges is making a mixed reality game design. Um, because you can't just be a better console game. You can't just be a virtual reality game. A true mixed reality game is something that um, it takes the reality that's in front of me, takes this water bottle, it adds virtual content to it. So the water bottle's involved in the game and there are characters that are doing something with that. Mm -hmm. So the two of them actually interact with each other. Mm -hmm. or, or it can be playing cards or it can be wooden blocks or it can be um, you know, objects from around your house. And then you have something interesting that can't exist anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You can't have that game in VR. You can't have that game on a console. It can't be on a smartphone. Only in mixed reality can that game exist. Mm -hmm. And then you're onto something interesting. Mm -hmm. So the, does the technology really just have to be seamlessly perfect for this to really work for the consumer? I always think about it as seamlessly. <laughs> <laughs> And I think the experience for me when I put it on was so incredible mm -hmm. that my memory of it is that, oh my gosh, there was monsters in the room. And yet you know in your head there's no such thing as monsters. And we put ghosts in the room now. You know there's no, well, there might be ghosts, but um, now we let you see them. Um, it, it, it is very compelling. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if it is real. Mm -hmm. We, and we have more going on outside of Magic Leap now. Um, Nintendo showed uh, this video uh, with you know, Pokemon out in the real world, out in the wild, you know, sitting on top of, uh, running on top of Google's Niantic uh, Ingress uh, location-based gaming platform. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it seemed very inspirational uh, to, to be able to sort of join with a bunch of other people hunting down Pokemon in real places. If anyone can get me on the beta for that, <laughs> love to. Um, I, I think that's the inspiration everyone wants and expects, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the same with, um, with Ingress, and everyone wants and expects that to, the, to be the integration that you actually get. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was interacting with the world when the, you know, when the monster splashed into the water, water came out, and the boat rocked, and mm -hmm. everyone wants that. I, I want to see you know, X-Wing fighters, and I want to see you know, Marvel superheroes and Superman, and um, have them actually interact with the world around me. Mm -hmm. So I think that demonstrated very well mm -hmm. the fantastic dream of, of mixed reality. Mm -hmm. how, how would you see the difference between AR and VR, where VR is um, sort of a, you know, a completely artificial world that you're seeing? 
I think VR is, it takes you somewhere else, right? I mean, it, it, that transports me and puts me in some other place. Um, AR, I think, presents information on top of the world. Mixed reality adds to the world and it adds photons to the world. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot about um, why would I want photons added to the world? You know, what's the applications that I actually want to, you know, to add on to the world? And I think about you know, you know, something I call the five mile application. Mm -hmm. Um, the five mile application is um, I'm five miles away from my house and I forgot my smartphone. Do I go back to my house and get my smartphone? Yeah, I'm going to go do that. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's something I'm going to go do because it makes me better. It makes me more awesome. There's games on it. My, um, you know, I'm smarter because of it. I'm five miles away from my house and I've forgotten my smart watch. Do I go back and get it? Well, not right now. The, 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 there's no compelling application, there's no game I want to play, there's no application I want to play there at all. I'm 50 feet away from my house, do I go back and get it? Nope. Mm -hmm. What is our game? What is our application? What is our application that we have in mixed reality that makes you turn around at five miles? Mm -hmm. um, that is the key application that we need to be thinking about because um, that's, the, that, that's why you'll line up at the store for four days and you know, in the rain and then be sad that they've only got the 32 gig version in white left and when you're really wanting 128. We're thinking a lot about that application in that five miles as well as that experience is so compelling that, that you'll turn around for it. Mm -hmm. Tim Sweeney had a very interesting comment about augmented reality about like maybe if, if we perfect it in 10 years, um, we don't need any uh, displays anymore. No displays on our smartphones, you know, no displays on our TVs. Uh, who needs a movie theater when you've got a big, uh, big uh, you know, 40-foot screen in front of your eyeballs? We talk a lot about that because we're replacing... Mm -hmm. Basically, we're the world without atoms. Mm -hmm. So unless you actually need those atoms, we can make the photons for it. And that then starts you on a pretty weird road of... You know, well, what needs to be real in my world? Well, my coffee, my coffee cup. Um, but <laughs> other things, the displays, you know, my work, my environment, the people I work with being local to me, um, you know, the experiences I have at night, you know, with, um, with entertainment that I typically watch, the sports that I engage with, the, um, the, you know, the concerts I go to, those things I don't generally interact with the atoms of. And so we will be changing you know, how you perceive reality. And then you get really weird in your head for a while. Mm -hmm. So mixed reality versus VR again, it, it almost seems like it's easier to make games in VR uh, that uh, maybe we're more used to or familiar with. Uh, augmented reality, um, uh, we could see it uh, being useful for a lot of non-game applications. Um, you know, uh, do you sort of foresee uh, uh, that kind of world coming where uh, maybe AR is actually um, much more uh, a non-game technology, I guess? I think, mm -hmm. I think mixed reality spreads across the whole spectrum of non-game all the way to game. Trying to change the word from augmented reality into mixed reality, right? Well, <laughs> I'm doing very well as it too. <laughs> um, mixed reality, putting stuff into the world and using it, or AR stick himself on top of it. Uh, and okay. that's what, for a while, you know, it was very hard to think about what a game would actually be in augmented reality. And we started out putting games on tabletops mm -hmm. and, you know, replacing things on tables and making the game there. And that's awesome because now there's games on tabletops that are real life and Dungeons and Dragons is really cool and fantastic and all those things. Then we moved on to putting games in kind of your house so that you start playing a game where you're using wooden blocks, and the wooden blocks you spell letters on, and the, and the wooden blocks are saying you know, words, and you're learning how to actually interact with the world. In the next room in your house, that you start to hear lights, and you start to hear sounds going off, and the sounds are placing it perfectly, and the lights are going off and looking good. Eventually, you'll go look in that room, and you'll go see what's there. And standing in front of you is a ghost. And the ghost is standing in your house, in one of your rooms, in the middle of your room. And that ghost points at you, and it points directly at you, and it points directly beyond you. And you look behind you, and there's an outline of a body on the floor. And then you look back, and the ghost is gone. But in your ear, you hear, please help me. And then you'd realize, 
I'm having a story in my house. This, what I'm going to be talking about at work the next day is I'm helping solve, solve a haunting going on in my own environment. My gosh, I'm not going to be able to sleep at night <laughs> because I'm going to put the glasses on. And, and, oh my God, this <laughs> is still there. And it's, that kind of experience is something that can't be had in VR because VR takes you somewhere else. Uh -huh. We're giving you experiences that happen inside environments you're already very familiar with. And that's incredible, not been done before. And that kind of design, mm -hmm. that, kind of, that kind of narrative is incredibly difficult, incredibly hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever worked on, but it is so awesome to work on that problem. So who has the harder job in making something convincing than uh, a VR game designer or <laughs> a mixed reality <laughs> game designer? I think we both have very hard jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I, I only focus on my space, so it's, um, I, I focus on making things appear in rooms and make it compelling. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to drive spaceships around in VR, but um, it, it's kind of like, that's what I'll wait to go do. I'm not going to think about that, that problem space. Mm -hmm. um, Have you figured out the part about like, how everybody's got a different house and uh, <laughs> furniture is in a different location? And and now you know, you're going to put a game character in here and it's, no, it's a... going to navigate? <laughs> Learning to see what is in your house and getting the idea of, of the, where the space is at on the floor, where, where your walls are at, and where kind of objects are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the idea of the ghost is to actually help you with that because um, you'll talk to artificial intelligence people and they'll say, we can work it all out we can work out where everything's at in the house. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, I can just have a game character ask, hey, where's a good place to put this game? Is that a floor? Is that, is that the best wall to put the screen on? And you know what? People love to interact with characters, and they love to interact with So we don't need to know, you know that much about it, because we have someone in, in, in virtual, you know, virtually there asking you if, if that's the right thing to go do, mm -hmm. which is just by itself sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So, um, how, um, how much time for experimentation do we have here? You know, there are different platforms. Cast AR is a, a different, say, version of mixed reality as well. Different platforms are going to be experimented with. Uh, how, how much um, of the time do we have for experimentation? And then when do you see some, some things really settling down into commercial products? We think a lot about we actually have three things that we do at Magic Leap. We have, um, we have a play lab mm -hmm. that just looks at Lego bricks and looks at small experiences and, and you know, what's music like in what we're doing. What's it like to touch the world? What's it like to sculpt in it? What's it like to go and you know, do these small experiences in Lego bricks so that um, we can learn what games are like in, um, in mixed reality? And we think about that an awful lot because you know, those Lego bricks will be helpful to everyone. Um, we have something we call the incubator lab where we're just actually in the final week of pitch fest, which is our internal, um, um, our internal across the company idea of asking everyone in the company, what is the most awesome thing you can do in mixed reality and tell us what it is and you'll have a chance to go prototype it. And we had over 250 ideas from across the company. Um, 22 of them we went to go and ask to make be into better presentations. Eight of them we are actually going on to prototyping and you know, the, the second group's coming up this week. So the incubation lab is something that we look at across the whole company and, and getting ideas in because we have rocket scientists and because we have Neil Stevenson's. Um, and then we look at, at kind of what is a large AAA game in what we're doing. And we take a chance and we, we roll and we try and make something and it might be wrong. It might be bad, it could be, but we learn pipeline and we learn how to move from you know, the art department into the animation department, into programming, into what interface actually is, what it's like to run on the device, how it actually loops around, what's, what's it like to ask for something that's, uh, you know, in, you know, to place something on the table. And so we think about experimenting in those three groups quite a little bit. Mm -hmm. So maybe I should save you some uh, post-talk uh, questions here, I guess, from everybody in the, the crowd. When are your game development tools going to be ready, and when is your product going to ship? <laughs> we are working day and night on it, I can tell you that. I mean, that's, we work around the clock. I've never seen a harder working set of people on the planet, and all I can tell you is stay tuned. We are, um, it's very exciting. Very good. Thank you very much. <laughs>